So everything changes. Anything changing in your life lately? A lot of times, as time goes by, we think of the things we want to change. We often resist the change that happens to us, and then we get inspired to activate change and create change, set some intentions, have some goals, have some resolutions, have some things that we want to shift, things that we want to unfold. Maybe we just want to grow. And unity's third principle is the law of mind action, that thoughts held in mind create after their kind. So in new thought, we're often quite good at understanding co-creation, understanding visioning, understanding launching visions. We've been doing this for over 100 years in unity, and it's now becoming mainstream. It's now mainstream to read an article about um, setting intentions and clearing the field and co-creating, all the things that unity has taught from the beginning. And it's a good thing that it's mainstream, right? It may make our centers a little bit smaller from time to time, but it's a good thing because we want the world to have this information. And in unity, we like to take deep dives, not just skate on the surface of what something means, but usually people, when they find themselves in a unity center and the unity practice, they're ready to do deep, meaningful, real work. And they've done all the surface work of going like, okay, I get it, that's the idea, that's the principle, here we go. So we often don't have, time, have problems launching a vision, you know, we're often good at just saying, okay, this is what I see, this is my intention, this is what's next. But the deep work comes in when we learn about the principle, and we learn about the process, and we learn about the creative flow of life. Life expands as we grow. Sig Paulson, a unity minister and author, and one of my very favorites, who was here during his walk on earth, shares this in the book, How to Love Your Neighbor, Sig Paulson. He says, God is within you, and your major activity is to discover the way it operates and the creative energies it reveals and releases through you. He goes on to say, you are tapping unsuspected energy fields within your reach because your being has its roots in them. These fields are so real that our scientists are beginning to detect them through laboratory research methods. Can you imagine if these guys were around now to see everything that's been uncovered scientifically connected to the principles? This is a total tangent, but I just read an article the other day about, um, like, Benjamin Button kind of thing, reversing aging, like reversing it and reprogramming. There's new discoveries around that. And I thought to myself, Charles Fillmore, you freaky guy. Because there's some stuff coming down the pike as far as research that is incredible when you look at the Unity teachings. Did anyone else see those articles? They'll weave their way in sometime. It's too much, too much right now. It's too much of a, I got to sit with this one. So he's referring to scientists and what they're, they're studying, what they're discovering. And he says, while scientists may label them electromagnetic force fields or use some other scientific designations, they are talking about the same creative energy sources that were discovered by enlightened souls ages ago. Yeah? You don't have to know the science to use the principle. You don't have to understand the structure to use the method. As you become, he says, more aware of what is taking place at the deep, more subtle areas of being, you will find that the energies that flow from these fields focus or individualize into a powerful creative current of energy that is constantly pouring into and through you. This focused or individualized current of energy is uniquely your own. It has your name on it, your infinite nature on it. 
So if we believe this to be true, that's pretty exciting. That's pretty engaging as far as launching our visions. What we want to unfold, what we want to see in our lives. We know about the law of mind action, that thoughts held in mind create after their kind. That it matters what we're thinking, what we're holding, that the universe can't have something happen to us, it has to happen through us, right? That the energy that we're holding, darkness can't drive out darkness, only love can do that, only light can do that. Martin Luther King, it's that principle-based thinking that I have to become what I want to create. It cannot come through a channel that is not of like mind, yeah? The issue is that we don't always know what's in the mind. We don't always do the deep work. We don't always take the deep dive into the soul work of really reflecting on what we're really holding. Recognizing that everything has a cause. That behind everything, there is an energy flow, there is a cause, there is something that is sourcing everything that appears. So growth partially depends on our ability to see what's right in front of us. And the funny thing about being human, the funny thing about the human condition, is that we're almost like programmed not to see what's right in front of us. Right? Like you can't look at your own eyes. It's quite difficult Even when we think we're awake, even when we think we're aware, even when we think we're mindful, right? When we use the practice, we have these wake-up calls, these, oh my goodness, these times when we just go, ah, really? I was still doing that? I'm still doing that? I'm still asleep there. Hmm, okay, I see. Show me. I can't always see my stuff. And I can't always see when I'm enabling your stuff. And that's just part of the human condition. Yet we all want to grow and we're all dealing with this constant thing called change. So how do we apply the principles? What are the steps? What are the tools? Because unity is about practical spirituality. It's about applying tools to our real life. It's not about showing up for an hour on a Sunday morning and then going back out to the world as if it's separate from the practice, right? Unity is the practice. Today is the day that we put the energy before us that we will walk through the week with so that we can co-create our good. So the first step is be intentional. It sounds funny, but so much of life is not intentional. So often we just operate through routines and through habits and patterns and not intentions. And we forget the power of an intention. We underestimate the power of of an intention, of saying it, of seeing it, of holding it, of sitting with it, journaling it, announcing it to ourselves, diving into meditation and grasping it. Be intentional. Know your intention and let it go before you. And your intention will be more powerful than your illusions but it's ours to declare it. We set the intention. And then what do we do after we set it? We let it go. Set it and let it go. Well, what does that mean? We don't always talk about the depth of what it means to let it go. Does that mean do nothing after? Set an intention and then do nothing. Let go is actually quite deep. Let go means that we don't micromanage it. Let go means that we don't negate it. Let go means that we don't pull at it with the opposite of mind, body, spirit, of our actions our thoughts, our emotions, our choices. Let go means that we trust. Let go means that we lift it up. Let go doesn't mean really that we just let it go. Let go means that we hold it and we lift it up with an open hand. Let go means that we feel it to fuel it. 
let go means that we bring our minds and our bodies and our experience into the realm in our practice of where we have received it. Breathing into the place where it is so. Breathing into the experience, the wholeness, the peace, the light, the life of feeling it. It means doing our work. That's what letting go means. It means letting go of the God part or the grand overall design part, letting go of that. And it's almost like let's get going into the rest. It's not exactly doing nothing. It's saying, I release and I let go of this. And I am only here now for my source. I am only here for the greatest good. I am only here for the highest intention. I am only here for the co-creativity. I am only here for the highest expression. And it takes the show me prayer Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Show me anything. If that's your intention is peace, whatever it is, show me anything in me that is not in alignment with that intention. And that's where I start my walk. That's where I start doing my work. Knowing your intention begins to sort out what is in front of you and what is within you, if we're willing to see, which leads to the second step. So it's be intentional, and then the next is be helpable. Helpable is actually a word. I was thinking I, was in, I invented it because it actually does get underlined and spell checked, but it really is a word. Be helpable. Be helpable. Do you feel like you're helpable? You know, when we set intentions and when we have change and when we pray in growth, I think we feel very helpable. We're like, come on. Like, Think about what's going on in the world. Come on. Think about what's going on in life. Think about great things and then expansions of those great things. Ah. But are we helpable? Are we capable of being helped? Do we put out the invitation for help? In your spiritual practice, do you have a way, a method, where you put out invitations, sweet spirit, highest self, Angels, guides, universal energy of light, whatever it is, great source, Jesus, Buddha, master teachers. Are we putting out the invitation or are we going it alone? Are we forgetting that step and forgetting how powerful that step is to ask for help, to be helpable? Sometimes we think we are, and we think we're in the process of asking for help or getting help. But unfortunately, what we're doing is running around on the hamster wheel of enablement, enabling. Running around on the hamster wheel of just doing our circuit, doing our same thing we do all the time in the name of help me, help me. But I'm just running my racket. That racket is the story, the story that we've been living over and over, the story that keeps us from being helped, cycling. Maybe we're doing something to get attention. Maybe we need a witness. Maybe we just, we're in a repeating cycle. Maybe we can kind of see it, but we think we're moving out of it. I remember working with a therapist one time, and it's just funny saying this. Like, it's funny to think of these things after you get it and to realize that you really didn't get it before. But working with a therapist, explaining a cycle in a relationship that was happening and explaining how this happened and then that happened and then we moved through that and then we discussed and then there was growth and then there was a lot of conversation about awareness and and intention and then it happened again. And then there was a conversation, and then there was growth and healing, and then there was um, a lot of conversation and, like, real clear understanding of what was happening. And then it happened again. And then there was healing, and, and it was like, stop. So there wasn't healing. So there wasn't understanding. 
So there wasn't a shift in action. So there wasn't growth. You are misunderstanding talking about these things versus experiencing them and them being real and creating them. And I was like, ah. Oh. So nothing's happening all that time? Like, well, are you getting anywhere, hon? No, actually, yeah, no, that's why we're here. I didn't get it. That even part of the parts that felt like healing and the part that felt like understanding and the felt part that felt like growth, the part that felt like new commitments, the part that felt like awakening and awareness, those were all part of the cycle. Those were part of the enabling. Those were part of the system. And sometimes in our own beings, in our own bodies, and in our relationships, and in our world, and in our work, or whatever it is, we can get these rises out of things, right? We have these cycles and these systems within us, and until we wake up to them and see them, we can't jump off of the wheel. And we think we're moving forward, but we're really just walking around in the same circle going, I set my intention... Help me, I'm reaching out, I'm being helpable. This all looks like growth, it looks like expansion. Oh. It's a fine line between growth work, healing, helping, and enabling. So can we be helpable? A good friend told me at that same time in my life, look at what people are doing, not what they're saying. Look at what you're doing, not what you're saying. When we're caught in those cycles, it can help to look at if something's helping. And we may reach out to another or reach into ourselves and say, I don't see that this is helping you. I don't think this is helping you. Because we're complicated little creatures, aren't we? Huh. Sometimes we get something from talking through or from thinking we're growing, but from cycling. Are we helpable? I remember a, a time in my life where I was desperate for help, spiritual help. I, had, I would have taken psychological help, <laughs> anything, but help. Like, help me, help me. What am I not getting here? And I prayed a lot, and every time I prayed, I would have these incredible experiences, these incredible um, demonstrations of being shown something like here it is right in front of you you asked here it is and it was jaw dropping sometimes because avenues would open instantly like an avenue would open and it'd be like okay here you go and you know what I would do here you go and I would go okay I see that um and thank you, um, but we're going this direction, and we're doing it like this, so come on, come on. And then it would get messy and sloppy and painful, and there would be suffering again, and I would pray, and it was like grace. You want a moment of grace, beloved? Here you go, grace. Are you going to take it? And I'd go, well, just, yeah, give me that, give me that right there, and give me that right there, and then come on, come with me, come on. Come on, we're going over here. This way, come on, this way. And misery again, and me just going, you know, I know these principles are supposed to work. I know the law of mind action. I know the power of meditation, the power of prayer. I know I can heal this and keep it exactly like I want to if I just work hard enough. Then it can be exactly... 
the way I want it to be. And finally, I got to a point where I was saying, help me. And instead of pulling the hands of the source that helped me, I had no energy left to drag or to deny. That parting of the clouds opened up and there was sunlight and I was so deprived of the sunlight that I saw it and I walked towards it instead of grabbing the hands and pulling and saying, yeah, I know, but not like this. Instead, I slowly moved towards the light and I opened up the arms and I got down and I laid in the safety and the comfort of the arms. And I said, I see, and I'm sorry so many times I've denied, I've ignored, I've walked away from the help. I can't do this, I can't do it alone, I have nothing left, but I trust, I surrender, I'm going with you, no matter what. Are we helpable? Be intentional. Be helpable. And the third step is to be willing. To be willing. Sometimes we don't see ourselves as unwilling. It doesn't feel like that. There's holding intentions, there's observing things, and then there's trying to manage everything. Am I willing to see my stuff? Am I willing to see my part? The beloved teacher, Wayne Dyer, always said, if you're holding a vision or an intention or there's a healing or an expansion and it's not coming into fruition, there's something you're not willing to do. And he invited us to look at that. Just look at our willingness. Am I willing to see my stuff? Am I willing to see all the sides of an issue? Do I have the spiritual maturity to hold conflicting views, to engage in the possibility of the opposite, to let go of the human condition and its incessant need to gather evidence to be right, even though that's what the mind does, and to instead... Look at how I might be partnering with a limitation or a problem. Am I willing to see my stuff? Am I willing to engage in the possibility that I live in a friendly universe that says yes, that offers help, that is the full creative embodiment of progress? And if I'm not experiencing that, then there's a surrender I'm invited into to really ask myself, am I willing? Have I been willing? Or am I simply gathering evidence to justify either how I feel or justify something not emerging, justify a limitation? Am I insisting that it be my way instead of my what? Sig Paulson said, the current of creative energy is just as unlimited as the infinite fields of energy from which it arises. You are its product, its image, its self-expression. Whatever it is that you are to be in the unfathomable reaches of eternity that lie before you is already contained within this current that knows its way to your true selfhood. 
already contained in the current that knows its way. Can we lean into that current, get in that river, sleep in those arms? That's our affirmation. The current knows its way. It is the source, he says, of all that you have ever been, are now, ever will be, the clean, pure stream of being. He goes on to say, you are reaching a high point in your spiritual unfoldment. And as the powerful, creative, adventurous current of love, light, and laughter expands its operation in you, through you, and as you, miracles will take place. Be intentional. Be helpable. Be willing. Namaste. So let's take a moment to breathe into meditation, to just get centered, to just open our hearts to where we are in this moment, to humble ourselves. There is an intention, sweet spirit. There's a vision, a longing, or a desire within. Let me be pulled by that vision. Let me be lifted and carried into the change that is for my highest growth. Let my intentions be radiant, honorable, sacred. Let thy help be visible. tangible, graceful. Let my willingness be full. Trusting. Mindful. Here I am. I release and I let go. I move to the depths of my being to call forth all that is within me. a mighty expansion, mind, body, spirit, so that I may discontinue the cycle of enabling, the cycle of discord or lack, complacency. And I may elevate and activate all that I am, all that I am intended to be, all that I came here to express as a child of the infinite. That I may be of service to this world of beloveds. to the people, the animals, the creatures, the nature, the waters, the world, the ethers, the expressions and expansions of consciousness. 
in this thing we call life. Let me be awake. May I be aware. I am mindful. Inhaling and exhaling into the silence. By the power of this practice, may all beings have freedom from suffering and the causes of suffering. May all beings know God as love and themselves as emanations of this love. May all beings know that we're born blessed and here to be a blessing. Namaste. Namaste.